Welcome back to P4. Today we are looking at vectors, unit 7.1. And it's the last unit in P4. Awesome. So, what is a vector? Now, if you've done mechanics, you would have already seen this, or physics. Um, a vector is something that has both magnitude and direction. So think of it as like size and direction. It's usually represented as a line. So a straight line between two points, so something like this. Say, if I call this A and B and give it direction, it now has magnitude and direction, and this would be the vector A, B which we write as A, B, with an arrow above it. And that means it's the vector from A to B. If I wanted to go in the other direction, from B to A, this would be then the same as, you know, the vector minus B, A. Would be the same thing. The other direction, we would change our signs. Vectors are often given a single letter. So this vector AB might be told that this is the vector A, which means that then if I have an equal size vector in the opposite direction, that would be minus A. So that would be what we're looking at here. If this is A, then this is minus A. So here you can see same size, exactly the same um, I want to say direction then, it's not. Um, a better word would be that these two are parallel. So they're parallel and the same size, which means that then just the direction is what's different. Hence, it's the same vector, just one has a minus and one is a plus to show the different directions. Now, we have another thing now called triangle law, although it's not always for triangles. So if I have a vector like this one here, and then I take a second vector and add it to it. So imagine I have the vector, you know, A plus the vector B, then that is this vector plus this vector. And then according to my triangle law, these would be able to be joined. So what we do is we take our, our line, and then this would become the vector AC. You can see here, this vector AC is A plus B. So basically the way vectors work is you get a start point and an end point, and you can take any path to get there. You just follow the vectors and either add them up or subtract them as you go along. So in this kind of case, we've got kind of A, B plus B, C, and that's the same as just A straight to C. And that's called the triangle law. Okay, it's far more better to think of it as a resultant vector, the vector that results from what we're doing. And then finally, it's about scalar. So if I have a vector like this, and let's call this vector A, if I have a parallel vector, that is twice the size, then that would be 2a. If I had a parallel vector that is three times the size, then that would be 3a. And obviously if I had one then where the direction changed, but it was parallel and the same size, or in this case three times the size, 3a. Okay, change the size, minus a. Now, this is the basics, and a lot of this is GCSE, but what we'll do is we'll get stuck into a few questions, and as we start doing questions, hopefully more and more will make sense. Okay, so let's start with some straightforward vectors. So we're given here three, sorry, four different types of vectors, and we need to illustrate these. So 3D is going to be three lots of vector D. So if I look at vector D, it's just one 
square straight down. So three lots of that is going to give me three squares straight down. Nice and easy. Now, second one, A plus B. That's going to be A plus B. So first we need to draw A, which is three across, two up. Just going to draw these in freehand so that's a and then we add b which is three to the left like so and our resulting vector which joins the start with the end that is my a plus b there so a plus b is essentially two up in the vertical direction Okay, now C. This one we've got A, then minus C. So as we did previously, A is 3 across 2 up. So let's just draw that one in freehand. And then minus C means that I do C, but in the opposite direction. So you can see up here, I'll do next to C parallel with it, but going in the opposite direction will be the minus C. So that will be 2 to the right and 2 down. That's my minus C. So the resultant vector, this joins the start with the end, is A minus C. So start, end. That's what we're doing, joining the start and the end together on these. And next we have D minus 2B. So B is three squares to the left, minus B is gonna be three squares to the right, okay? So D is one square down, and then we went three and another three, or six to the right. I'm gonna use my ruler on this one. This is a little bit more awkward. And there we have our resultant vector, D minus 2B. Remember, just join your start and your end points together. And that's the direction you go when you go from the start to the end. So that's how you know which way the arrow is going. OK, second example here. Again, we've not really hit anything to the level of the harder GCSE or IGCSE style vectors and we won't for for a few little bits but you know you still need to get your head around it some of you would have struggled with this uh, last year now let's have a look what we've got so we've got PQ is A PS is B and RQ is C we're also told that QT equals ST. So QT equals ST. So T is the midpoint of QS. So first we want to find PR. So PR. And we have to go in a direction or a route that we know. So to get from P to R, I'll go P to Q and Q to R. And that's what I'll always write down, you know. So P R is where we're looking to go. And then going P to Q plus Q to R. And you'll notice that your start letter here and your end letter will be the vector we want to do. And you might have more than one of these, but as you'll see Q, this one ends in Q, starts at Q, and so on. You get this... Uh, even if you've got more of them, it'll be a nice, easy pattern. So P to Q is A, and Q to R will be a negative C because of the direction. We're going in the opposite direction. Now, let's have a look at B. We want Q to S. So find Q, find S. Of course, I can't go down this way, I don't know it. I can't go this way, as I don't know this way. So I've got to go Q to P and P to S. So Q to P, 
plus B to S. Q to P is negative A, P to S is B, and I want to write that as B minus A. So it's best to start with a positive value. And then let's look at part C, S to T. Now, I want to go S to T. I can't do that. S to B. It's starting to get difficult, but I have found some of these answers already. So P to R, I already have found, haven't I? Okay, or a better still one is this. We've already found QS, haven't we? So if I think about it, Q to S, yeah, this is halfway, isn't it? T is the midpoint of QS. So that's the easiest thing to do. So if I think about it this way, first of all, um, Q to T is half Q to S. Okay. And that is one half B minus A. Now, if I think of Q to T, Q to T is exactly the same as T to S. We want S to T. So S to T is negative Q to T. So S T is minus a half B minus A or a half A minus B. And part D, we want to find PT. We're told that this is in the ratio of 2 to 1. Therefore, PT must be 2 thirds of uh, PR. So it's two thirds of A minus C. And that's it done.